Hello, Assalamu alaikum. My name is uh, Dr. Jangir Khan and I am working as a PG at PEMS Hospital, Islamabad. The purpose of this video is to uh, make the controversial MCQs of the FCPS part first very clear. I will make short videos regarding the confused scenarios and MCQs of FCPS part first. <coughs> now today, <coughs> we will discuss about the fluid management. Now there is an MCQ that is circulating in the FCPS part first group. So first of all, I will make that MCQ very clear. <coughs> What is that MCQ? That is a person loses 2 liter of water while sweating and he drank 2 liter of water. What will happen to the extracellular fluid? Now based on that stem we are having 4 MCQs. What will happen to the volume of intracellular fluid? What will happen to the osmolarity of intracellular fluid? what will happen to the volume of extracellular fluid and what will happen to the osmolarity of extracellular fluid. So based on a single stem we can explain four MCQs. If we know the concept regarding the stem of the MCQ we will be able to, to, to solve all the MCQs and if the CPSP is changing the stem or if uh, CPSP is changing the option, we will be able to, 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 to pick that option and pick, pick that, 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 that stem. <coughs> so a person loses 2 liter of water. Then he drank 2 liter of water. what will happen to intracellular fluid volume. Now this is very tricky. Intracellular fluid volume and intracellular fluid osmolarity. These two are the different thing. Now <clears throat> taking the advantage of photographic memory, I will explain here photographic representation so that it lasts longer in your brain and you will be able to pick any kind of MCQ regarding fluid management. So this is graph. In this graph we are having volume on the x-axis and a smolarity on y-axis. <coughs> and this is the normal fluid compartment. Well, there is a, a file uploaded by me in the group already regarding this photographic representation. You can you can study that file over there. Purpose right now is to explain that graph. So this is intracellular fluid compartment. This is extracellular fluid compartment. Now the x axis it shows volume. The y axis it shows a smolarity. This is the normal diagram of a normal human body. <coughs> now if you add normal saline, what will happen? Adding isotonic saline. <coughs> now keeping that diagram in the mind, we are having intracellular fluid, extracellular fluid. It will only stretches that side. Now only stretches that side mean it is increasing only the extracellular fluid volume. It is doing nothing to the intracellular vol fluid volume. It is neither increased nor decreased. It is doing nothing to the osmolarity of intracellular fluid volume. It is doing nothing to the osmolarity of extra fluid volume. Because it is isotonic saline, the osmolarity of isotonic saline is 0.9 percent. And if the osmolarity of the fluid that we are infusing to a person is the same as that of blood or plasma, it will only increase the extracellular fluid volume, not osmolarity. Now, if we add hypotonic saline, so you have to keep in mind this is this was or actual representation of a normal person. So if you add hypotonic saline, it will stretch it down 
and it will stretch both intracellular fluid volume and extracellular fluid volume what it does <coughs> it decreases the osmolarity of saline uh, uh, of plasma so if the osmolarity of the plasma is decreased so what will happen the fluid will leak the angiotic pressure is decreased the fluid will leak to the intracellular fluid so the intracellular fluid volume is increased osmolarity of, of both extracellular fluid and in, intracellular fluid is decreased volume of extracellular fluid is increased volume of intracellular fluid is increased now another scenario is if you if we add hypertonic saline hypertonic now what does hypertonic saline do it increases the osmolarity of plasma so this that was the actual diagram what it does it increases the osmolarity of both the intracellular fluid and the extracellular fluid but it decreases the volume of the intracellular fluid because it is hypertonic so it increases the anchotic pressure what happens it draws the water from the cells so the cells shrink so what happens the intracellular fluid volume it shifted to the right it is decreased what will happen to the osmolarity of extracellular fluid volume and intracellular fluid volume they both increases volume of intracellular compartment decreases but what happens to the volume of the extracellular compartment that increases so by just keeping in memory all these photographs you are able to to solve mcqs of 15 to 20 and now what was the actual mcq person loses 2 liter of water he drank 2 liter of water now water is what it is hypotonic so we are having three representation basic so the hypotonic what will it do it will decreases the osmolarity of extracellular fluid volume and intracellular fluid volume it will increase the volume of extracellular fluid compartment and it will increase the volume of intracellular fluid compartment so the mcq is the same but you are having further four option if the question asks what will happen to the intracellular fluid volume that increases if the question asks what will happen to the volume of extracellular fluid compartment that will increase and if the question asks what will happen to the osmolarity of the extracellular fluid compartment that decreases and if the question asks what will happen to the osmolarity of extracellular fluid compartment that also decreases so by by making the concept of the stem and by memorizing the three diagrams you will be able to 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 play with the tricks made by cpsp so if you are getting any benefit from from this video share in the comments below so that i make further videos and uh, explain all the controversial mcqs for fcps part pass preparation thank you so there is a, another mcq regarding fcps part first that is how much normal saline is required to raise volume of blood by 1 liter another mcq is how much hemocell is required to raise blood by 1 liter volume of blood by 1 liter now we can answer it directly but that will not help you in in, in solving the mcqs we must know the concept regarding that so for that purpose uh, i draw diagram in this diagram you can see this is the vascular compartment this is the interstitium and these are the cells now if you transfuse 1 liter of normal saline to a person how is this normal saline distributed in the body <coughs> so you transfuse 1 liter normal saline so what happens we divide it in four parts 4 by 4 one fourth remain in vessels while the three fourth it comes out of the vessel and goes into the interstitium 
Now another MCQ that comes over here is we already discussed that it does nothing to the volume of the cell it does nothing to the osmolarity of the cell so it plays all the game with the extracellular fluid now how it is distributed in the extracellular fluid that is one fourth remain in vessels and three fourth it comes out of the vessel so now it is simple mathematics what is meant by one fourth of thousand ml that is 250 ml so if you give one liter of normal saline to a person it will increases the intracellular fluid volume that is the blood volume will be increased by 250 ml and the interstitium volume will be increased by 3 fourth so you are having another mcq that is the interstitium fluid volume is increased by the infusing one liter of normal saline by 3 by fourth or so 250 into 4 is equal to 1000 ml if one liter can increase volume of blood by 250 ml then we require four four reps four infusion set of normal saline to increase the volume of blood by one liter so here four liter now the basic concept behind this was you must know the ratio in which a, the normal saline divides between the interstitium and the vascular compartment one fourth remain inside three fourth comes out of the cell that was for the normal saline <coughs> another mcq is how much hemocell is required to raise blood by one liter now we we should know the nature of hemocell that it is <coughs> isotonic and it does not leak out of the vascular compartment so the answer over here is one liter why because if it is not leaving the vascular compartment so any amount that we introduce into the person the volume of blood will be increased by that much amount <coughs> well there is another mcq that comes again and again a person drinks water one liter of water what will happen to the a smolarity of urine so <clears throat> drinks water drinks water does what increase volume of blood if it increase the volume of blood the water content of the blood is increased it suppresses adh now there comes another mcq how much fluid is required to suppress adh that is 7% to 10% of fluid if you transfuse a person less than 7% fluid it will not suppress adh that was another MCQ. So if person drinks water and that person takes sufficient enough, that is 7% to 10% or more than 7% to 10%, it will suppress ADH. Mean there is no ADH. What was, norm, what was the normal function of ADH? It reabsorbs water. When it reabsorbs water, what will happen to the urine that comes out? that will become concentrated and if the urine becomes concentrated due to the effect of ADH the osmolarity of urine increases now I am telling about the normal function of ADH if a person drinks water it suppress ADH there will be no ADH there will be no suppression of water uh, there will be no increase absorption of water if there is no increase absorption of water more fluid will come out in the urine more urine will formation so the osmolarity will drops so if a person drinks water what will happen to the osmolarity of urine that will decrease another mcq is if a person drinks water what will happen to the volume of urine that will also increase but the idea behind that is the function of ADH you must know the what is the normal function of ADH thank you